Hello, my name is Kaushik and in this video I will be explaining about Diagnostic Log and Trace which is widely known as DLT in AutoSAR. Mainly I will be talking about the DLT module in Classic AutoSAR, different types of modes and later I will be talking in detail about the message format used by DLT protocol and explain what each parameter means. Let me touch upon some brief introduction to this module. DLT is nothing but Diagnostic Log and Trace module. It collects the log information either from applications or from other software modules like DET or DEM. Then it appends with some metadata also called as the DLT headers and then sends it to the communication bus. The complete DLT frame with header and log data forms to be very lengthy. So it is recommended to use higher bandwidth communication bus like Ethernet. But it does not limit it to the Ethernet bus. User have the option to choose any other communication bus. Another advantage of DLT is that it has log information filtering depending on the severity of the log information. For example, if a log captured is just an information, it can be of low severity level. And if the log is of a fatal error which has occurred, it can be of a higher severity and it can be filtered accordingly. Coming to the classic platform, the DLT module lies in the service layer as shown in the figure. It can interact with the software component, DET, DEM modules to get the logs. These logs can be transmitted on a communication bus. The DLT also interacts with the NVM module to store the filter settings. These filter settings can be modified during the runtime by sending a command message from the external tool. Now let's see two different types of logging modes available. One is verbose mode and another one is called non-verbose mode. In verbose mode, the logging method is like an application or software component is generating a log message. This log message is then sent to a DLT module which implements the DLT protocol. Here the DLT module includes all the header information to the log message. The DLT module sends the log message to the communication bus. An external DLT client records the log message. In non verbose mode the procedure is same but only difference is that while implementing the DLT protocol to a log message, it appends only few required header information and other information is called as metadata which will be already available with the DLT client as a separate FIBEX file. This way there is a possibility given to reduce the overhead in the log messages being sent. Now let's see the DLT message format in these two modes. In verbus mode there are three sections, standard header, extended header and the payload. As I said before, in verbus mode the DLT module appends the log message with the complete header and then sends it to the communication bus. Both standard and extended header will be appended here. The standard header is of 16 bytes and extended header is of 10 bytes. These two headers consists of different parameters and I will explain each one in detail in next coming slides. Now coming to non verbose mode, as I said before only a part of header will be appended to the log message in this mode. So only standard header will be appended and the extended header will be part of the FIBEX file. To identify the extended header from the FIBEX file for a particular log message, a 4 byte message ID is added at the beginning of the payload. So based on the particular message ID, the DLT client can fetch, fetch the extended header from the FIBEX file while receiving a particular log message. During the introduction of DLT, I said that there is a provision of configuring the filter settings stored in the NVM during runtime. The DLT client sends a set log level to DLT module. 
The DLT makes necessary changes in the configuration of filter settings. After these configuration changes, the DLT module informs the application about the updated log level. These are the different log levels which can be set for any log message. I will not go into the details of each log levels as of now. If you need more information on the log level, you can go through the section 8.8.9 of Autosar DLT specification document. I have added the link to this document in the description below. Let's discuss the DLT frame format in detail. So as you all now know that if we look from the top level, there are three sections, the standard header, extended header and the payload. The standard header is of 16 bytes and is divided in three, six sections. We will discuss each attribute in detail. Zeroth byte is the header type. It consists of these attributes within. Bit 0 represents the extended header is used or not. Bit 1 represents the byte order. If it is set to high, it represents most significant bit first. Bit 2, 3 and 4 represents the optional sections of standard header that is ECU ID, session ID and the timestamps respectively are used or not. Bit 5 to 7 represents the Autosar version number. Now coming to the next section that is the first byte of standard header is message counter. It counts the number of DLT messages received by the DLT module. Second and third bytes contains the overall length of DLT message which includes standard header, extended header and the complete payload. Fourth to seventh byte contains the ECU ID which will be used to identify which ECU has sent that particular DLT message. This section is an optional section and is enabled or disabled in the bit number 2 of headers, header type section. 8th to 11th bytes contain the session ID which is used to identify the source of log or trace message within an ECU. This section is an optional section and is enabled or disabled in the bit number 3 of header type section. 12th to 15 bytes contains the timestamp which is used to add time information at which the particular DLT has been generated. Even this section is an optional section and is enabled or disabled in the bit number 4 of header type section. Coming to the extended header of the DLT message format, this whole section is enabled or disabled in the bit number 0 of header type section in the standard header. Extended header is of 10 bytes and it is divided in these four sections. Zeroth byte contains the message information. Bit 0 says if the DLT message is of verbose or non-verbose mode. Bit 1 to 3 states the type of message. DLT message type can either be a log message, a trace message, a network trace message or a control message. Bit 4 to 7 gives more information regarding the message type selected. For example, if you have selected the message type as a log message, you can give more information by specifying if the log is of fatal error or a software component error or if, the, if it is some warning or if it is an information or if it is a debug log or if it is a verbose log. Similar information can be specified for trace, network and control messages. First byte of the extended header contains the number of arguments which represents the number of consecutive parameters in the payload segment of DLT message. Second to fifth byte contains the application ID and 6th to 9th byte contains the context ID. These two IDs are specific to an application from which the DLT is generated. Please do like the video, comment if you have any questions, share it to someone whom it would help and also subscribe for more such videos. Thank you all and I will see you in a next video with some other topic on Autosar.